1934, the Belgian government set out the specification for a new aircraft for the Aeronautique Militaire, or Belgian Military Aviation, the predecessor of what today is known as the Belgian Air Force. The requirement was for a so-called aerial cruiser. It was to be a twin-engine bomber that could also function as a heavy fighter. It also had to use the wheels of the Fokker F7, as the Aeronautique Militaire had a large supply of these. Two companies were in the running for the contract. Le Cab with its GR8 and Stampe and Vertongen with its SV10. Today we are looking at the latter. I will do another video on the Le Cab aircraft at a later date. Jean Stampe, one of the founders of the Stampe and Vertongen Aviation Company, wanted to win the contract for the new aircraft. The job to design what was to be the SV10 was assigned to its engineer and designer, George Ivanov. George Ivanov was born as Yuri Ivanov in Odessa in Russia, which is now part of the Ukraine, on September 19, 1908. He and his family fled to Paris in 1917 in the wake of Lenin's communist revolution and the ensuing civil war. Here Yuri Ivanov got his degree in engineering and changed his name to George. In 1929 he met Jean Stampe who offered him a job as a designer, replacing Alfred Renard who left the company to start his own aircraft firm. Ivanov went on to design one of the most successful Belgian aircraft ever built, the Stampe SV-4 biplane, and the SV-5 Tornado military trainer, which saw service in both the Belgian Aeronautique Militaire, who bought 20 SV-5s, and the Latvian Air Force, who bought 10. So it was obvious to St Jean Stampe that Ivanov was the man for the job to design the new bomber and heavy fighter. The SV-10 was a rather uncanny and kinda ugly looking aircraft made out of wood and canvas construction with steel framing, but it was also outdated by the time it was built. It was built in a biplane configuration as it offered the best maneuverability at the time to meet the heavy fighter requirement. It had a fixed landing gear with spats and it had supports between the engine and the main landing gear. It was powered by a pair of 14 cylinder Nomron 14K radial engines, producing 780 horsepower each, giving it a maximum speed of 350 km per hour. It had a length of 11 meters and a wingspan of 18 meters for the upper wing and 11.6 meters for the lower wing. Its defensive armament was four FN Browning 7.62 mm machine guns, two in the nose turret and two in the rear. It also had the option for a fifth gun in a retractable ventral turret, mounted beneath the rear gunner station. It had a payload of 600 kilograms of bombs mounted vertically inside the fuselage. Construction soon started on the SV-10 and it soon became clear that the the workspace at Stamp and Vertoming was becoming a little cramped, as the huge aircraft, the biggest that Stamp ever built, was almost too big to fit inside its assembly hall. When the aircraft was rolled out of the factory in Deurne near Antwerp on October 1st, 1935, it had to be cramped out sideways as the wingspan was too wide for the hangar doors. Later that day, the SV-10 was getting ready for its first flight. Test pilot for the aircraft was Leon Stampe, a well-known and respected military pilot and the son of Jean Stampe. Georges Ivanov himself flew along as the flight engineer. The aircraft was already painted in Belgian military markings and received the military serial S25. Leon Stampe started the aircraft, taxied to the runway and took the SV-10 to the sky for the first time. The flight went off without any problems and the aircraft made a successful maiden flight. This was followed by a successful second flight on October the 4th. On its third flight the next day, things didn't go so well. After Leon Stampe took off from the airfield, he climbed to an altitude of 300 meters and made a 180 degree turn to fly a circuit around the airfield. Suddenly, the aircraft started rolling to the left. The pilot throttled back and managed to recover. And that's when disaster struck. The aircraft suddenly started to spin violently and came plummeting down to earth and crashed into a resident garden in Borsbeek near the airfield. Both Leon Stampe and George Ivanov were killed in the crash. Jean Stampe looked on in horror as in one blow he lost both his son, engineer and the biggest plane his company ever built. The cause of the accident was never found. Afterwards, Stampe and Vertongen cancelled the SV-10 project, focusing on servicing existing aircraft until the beginning of the Second World War in May 1940. In remembrance, two streets near Antwerp Dune Airport have been named after Leon Stampe and George Ivanov. And so ends the tale of the Stampe and Vertongen SV-10, the story of an aircraft that for Jean Stampe went from triumph to tragedy.